Hello and welcome again to the Hobo and his girlfriend wrestling show here on YouTube. My name is Hobo Tom. And tonight I know I'm a little bit behind. I'm here to talk a little bit about Lucha Underground. And the fun thing with Lucha under Underground right now, well, somewhat fun thing, it's going to end in about three weeks. Oh, wow, that's going to be... And by November 14th, I know, oh, wow, the whole Thanksgiving week, they normally do reruns, that's right, shoot. Well, I'm here, let's talk about the fun stuff, talk about Ult Ultima Lutra Quattro. Again, it's Saturday night, so again, please drink responsibly. I choose to, I'm here at home, I'll tell by my... Wrestling shirt, I'm not going out anytime soon. And please drink only if you're the legal age of 21. If you do go out to drink, please get a ride. Do not drive drunk. Don't make the police officer tase you, bro. That's an old reference. At least now it is. Let's talk about some Ultima Lucha Quattro. This was a really freaking fun show. Ultima Lucha does so much. In only a one hour time span. I know NXT is also an hour long. And really the two shows are really on par with each other. I mean, Raw seems so long. SmackDown, however, seems just about right though. Especially the way they've been doing things. I know especially with the Brian Daniels, AJ Styles match, which was actually a rematch. So I'd like to thank you whoever posted that video in the Friendoverse. I thought they had a match at least someone in their career. It was at some high school gymnasium. So it was either Pro Wrestling Gorilla or Chikara. Or some other minor league in or indie style. Minor league about wrestling. Not the proper terminology. Uh, again, some indie league. So they did wrestle once before. And I, I thought they did. I thought I saw them somewhere. I want to fix my lapel mic. So hopefully I get another couple months of use out of it. Again, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. But let's talk about Ultima Lucha Quattro. Again, it starts off with a super elite cap. Again, all this leads to everything that's going to happen for Ultima Lucha Quattro. Specifically for this series of matches, because they do show them in three weeks. So, you know, live, it's about three hours. That makes sense. So, over three weeks. In November 14th, there's going to be no more Lucha Underground. I guess I'll have to have El Vagabundo's El Hoboo Dos Trace back when Lucha Underground comes back on. Wow. But let's get to the wrestling. So, well, before the wrestling, there was some funky opening vignette.
That involved Aerostar and I guess Melissa uh, not Melissa, but um not Oh, Katrina's mother, I guess. Or sister, I don't know. I forget. I want to say it's her mother though, who's like over a thousand years old now. So it looks pretty good though. <laughs> the difference between this is I heard this on the radio one. The difference between cougars and jaguars is that jaguars have their spots. And don't ask me what a cougar is. You can go look it up in the urban dictionary somewhere. But just know Jaguars. <laughs> Terrible. Should be banned from YouTube for that. Oh, I still I am on my suspension. I want to say I have about today's... This video is going up to third. I think I only have about 57 more days left. That's a good. So that's a good sign. So, wow, I've already worked off most of my suspension. That's cool, because I know December 31st, I can live stream again. Again, I did, well, this time I think I know what I did wrong, but not completely sure. The first time I know exactly what I did wrong. That was my fault. The second time, eh, so-so. And Iron Knuckle guy. WWE adapts everyone. We just can't show their stuff. But Lucha Underground, you can show. And this led to the first match, which was a tornado elimination tag match between the Rabbit Tribe, All Red Everything, Ivelisse, Exolicious, and Sammy Guarvo. Versus the Reptile Tribe. Melissa Santos really lets you know who the heels are. Because again, in making her announcement, I'll try it. Let's see. And their opponents, the Rabbit Tribe. Entering the ring now, Reptile Tribe. And their opponents, Evilise, Exolicious. And Sammy Guarvo. I think I think I'm getting his name right. This was a really fun match. I mean, if they could do this on a TV show for taping, why can't? And listen, Evilise and Cobra Moon are awesome. They still take their bumps. They give their bumps. They sell. They do everything, and it's a true intergender match. It doesn't seem forced. It doesn't seem... There's no ooh moment. It just seems like a good old-fashioned wrestling match. And hey, you have a man and woman there. It is good stuff. The only other thing I have to say about this... I'll, I'll get to that. But again, it's a really fun match. Um, the first part, again... The White Rabbit tells the other members to go off, and he starts beating them down one by one. Um, eventually, everyone does come to, and, and then and the White Rabbit just gets a super kick party. It's pretty fun. After that, it's really a dive fest. Here we go. The insanity of Ultima Lucha 
Quattro begins. The pace of the reptiles is what's intriguing to me. They can go from slow to fast so quickly here in what is this? off the white rabbit. Ooh. Oh, he just bounced her head off the pole. You know what he just said? Oh, here we go, here we go. Wow. My side attack. When you're saying about the reptile tribe, just like any other thing, when they're going on the prey, you know how a snake is. They mm. strike slowly, they strike quickly. I guess it's just in character. Look at El Bunny. So vicious. Those sharpened front teeth of El Bunny all the way around. Lucha Libre on display by El Bunny. Bunny's kind of buff for a little too. What's El Bunny have in mind here? <laughs> ah, yeah. What a way to kick things off here. Well, I mean, it's really fun. Um, Tammy takes Cobra Moon to like the camera area. I should have shown you this. He does a standing Spanish fly from the raised camera area on top of everyone. You want to talk about a holy S moment and an oh my F and G. Spot. And I finally didn't make that gift. So again, if you do like and subscribe, you will get a gift in your honor. Or it might be a short video clip sometimes. I do have a couple things. I think I only have one more video to upload from my cell phone. And eventually I do have to show the one picture of Mary J of MJ Johnson. I think whom I got a selfie. And I was talking to my friend about uh, when I got my selfie with Nixon Newell and said, if she walked in to where I work wearing a girl with the shiniest wizard shirt in her wrestling gear, I would still not know that she was Nixon Newell. But that's a story for another time. Um, or I've told that story before, I think. But again, this was a really... F I mean, that Spanish fly was amazing. I mean, f from there, the, um, the White Rabbit throws Sammy Guevara into the ring by the mandible claw, which looked vicious. But, and then El Bunny. That's just awesome. It was a weird fluky elimination. Um, El Bunny was in the ring. Sammy, uh, no, uh, Paul London. Tripto had Sammy Guerva Jr. up, tripped over El Bunny, and got the pinfall. And Sammy Guerva got the pinfall on Jack London. And that eliminated the Rabbit Tribe. And that's just in Fury, the right right. A white rabbit stuck the mandible claw into his mouth for a prolonged time, and I guess the only thing it will do, I guess they're gonna unhinge someone's jaw with it. I know they wear the glove to protect from teeth marks, probably, or to slip in a blood capsule, because after he did that, he was a bloody mess. I think your fingers really can't go. Past the jaw. Unless you like rip the guy's tongue out. Ooh, that just sounds bad. But even then, you'd need more than two fingers. A tongue's all muscle. Ugh. But wh whatever happened. Um, so Sammy was for the most part incapacitated for the rest of the match. So, of course, Eva Lee and X Lucius kind of rolled him out for him. Medical attention. So then it was a three on one a while. Uh, poor Ivelisse. She can take a bump. The only thing I do have to question about Ivelisse do the curtains match the drape? So again, she goes Red Eagle a couple times. Again, because she is all red, everything. So you never know. Again, that's just my mind wandering. Um, Crane again gets it speed up. I mean, he's vicious too. 
who um eventually evilly evilly gets gets beat up so much and it rolls over to the side that leaves exolicious so it's a three on one on exolicious and then they just they just waylaid on him it was a series it was a butterfly shoulder breaker which led to a kneeling head scissors DDT, which led to his arm bar. And then Cobra Moon held back Ivalice. And he did, and Exolicious did try to, to lock hands. But then Snake Callahan running drop kicked his hands apart. And of course, and, and that arm bar that just pops it really affects the elbow and shoulder. More sort of the elbow because there's. Bending that elbow weight should not be bent. And that was the end of the match. And geez, this was a fun match. This was a surf and turf quality match. That led to the second match of the evening. <clears throat> Again, this was not a really fun match. It it was, it was relatively short, though. Again, with Melissa. From somewhere, Cal, from the Island of Dolls, Ricky Mundo. And his opponent, from Slamtown, USA, Taya. Wait for it. Mundo. So again, it is official. Um, Taya just goes right after Ricky, Ricky eventually does get the upper hand. Um, Taya, of course, comes back. Taya can really wrestle. She's really good. Again, this is why they should do more mixed match stuff. I mean, there was, there was a modified Mexican power by Taya, which led to a curb stomp, or on the back at least. But, oh, that would look vicious. And then, of course, Ricky at one before all this, pulled out a table and it's like, Ricky, I have to warn you. You pull out the table, you go through the table. He's watching. I hope Johnny comes home on time as he goes out with the boys. Taya had her elbow right in Ricky's face. Boy, yeah. The ice cream the slap to Ricky. No, and if we can get a shot of Taya's left hand, she's wearing her wedding ring in this match. Oh, 
accomplished wrestler all around the world. Of course, she made her name in Mexico. Cover here. So, getting back to the rest of the match. I again locked in the STO. Ricky Mundo tapped. That was good. What happened afterwards was better. And actually really made the match ha have some meaning. Tyler so puts Ricky through the table. You ruined my effing wedding. Is what she yelled at him. The crowd went bonkers. And then she grabbed the doll by the hair and just left. The crowd was going nuts. I mean, it was really fun, though. And then for the main event of the evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Lucha Underground proudly presents its main event. And this is a mask versus mask match. In this corner, from the open road, the son of Havoc, Havoc, and his opponent from somewhere in Washington, Trotton. That's almost the way Melissa Santos did it. I over I over exaggerated things. It really had a street fight feel. It was really fun. Um, they were trading forums for a while. They just said toe to toe. Havoc still had on, had on his um vest. There was a whole ole 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 lucha lucha, and I think the only and the crowd loved it. He won that t-shirt one day of Son of Havoc. That's a cool design. I like that. Even if it's just on the back of a t-shirt, looks badass. The only thing is, um, I don't know if this has happened everywhere. Oh, that's right. I didn't go that. Hot Topic pulled a lot of the wrestling t-shirts. I know most of them was from the Bullet Club. I do need to talk to Rebecca about that. But there were rumors that really most of the Bullet Club's going to WWE. I know it's going to be, I want to say it's the Young Bucks, Chase Owens, Hangman Page, and Kenny Omega, and maybe. Cody Rhodes? I don't know. Maybe that's why they, they pulled their merch. And I know in my hot topic, they pulled all the wrestling t-shirts and replaced it with Funko Pop. I guess it's a nice collectible. As you can see by my shelves. I really don't have any Funko Pop. I probably should somewhere. But I don't know. I just don't get it. Maybe it's an age thing. I don't know. I mean, I have pictures of Sear. Crew, crew, inspirational hockey pucks, calendar, drag race, books. Books are important. Also, read. Reading's, reading is fundamental. RIF, ref. But back to this match, though. It was really good. They were trading forearms. Son of Havoc's awesome. But the crowd was loving it. I do want that too. Um, again, someone in the audience had a wrestling is fun t-shirt. That's another cool looking t-shirt that I would like. I don't know. I have a whole list of stuff, I guess. Christmas time list. Matt Stryker and Vampiro are still just hands down the best announcing team ever. They're so good. I think I got kind of the, the back and forth between the two. <laughs> At one point, Killshot says, I'm not going to lose my mask to this piece of trash. Or votes him losing his mask. Yeah, it was an amazing, fun match. I mean, Killshot started to take 
turnbuckle apart, brings in a gurney, I mean, climbs the, they climb the scaffolding. There's an avalanche AA done with a shooting star press. Kill shot kicks out. Turnbuckle. <laughs> Dude, that's gonna feel comfy. Son of Havoc was able to slip off the back there. Son of Havoc caught him in midair and gave him a backbreaker to knock the kidneys right out of his earlobes. And it's interesting, you know, we see a lot of luchadors and luchadoras, they, they, they wear different ring attire. Both of these guys shirtless, they get sweaty, and you can almost use that to your advantage in a match. You can kind of parry off your opponent, slip off your opponent, and use their momentum against them. Not that I would know, but in prison, if you're going to get into a fight, a lot of guys put Vaseline on their body so when the police rush into the cell, they can't grab them that easily. I'm thinking to myself, Killshot, who's been tortured, been questioned under various different circumstances, he knows Whoa, that look at that ring padding. Looks like Son of Havoc is about to know what is underneath Tables. the ring. And of course, there's Dude, a Look table. at that ring set up. And then Killshot does the Storm Cradle Driver into the Kill Stomp. Son of Havoc kicks out. They trade blows a little bit more. Yay, booze. A pot. Son of Havoc strapped Killshot onto the gurney. Hey, cheese pot. And get, delivered a pile driver on the gurney and then hit. A shooting starter press onto Killshot on the gurney. Got the pinfall win. And most graciously, and in, in very honorable fashion, I don't know how a mask versus match goes. Normally the winner gets to rip the mask off. In this case, Son of Havoc did really the face thing. He allowed Killshot the moment. And Killshot did really the face thing. He explained why he wears the mask. Uh, I guess he gave him his, his name, which is, I guess, kind of a really luchador thing to do. I know in a mask versus match within WCW and WWE, they just they still keep their name, but they just kind of take the mask off and everyone sees their face. So, again, this was a really fun, amazing match. And you have the whole unmasking process. Can you tell me the importance of what we're about to see? 
This is admitting defeat and showing respect to your rival. There's no other way to tell you. Let's give Killshot the respect he deserves right now. My name is Lieutenant Jermaine Killshot Strickland. Yeah. For the past few years, I've been trying to erase and escape my true identity. And the fact that I left my brothers for dead. So overall, I mean, with all that went on, this is really a filet mignon mash. It was really that good. Son of Havoc is amazing. I hope he stays in Lucha Underground. I hope he goes to Ring of Honor. I hope he goes to Chikara. I hope he goes to New Japan. Do not send Son of Havoc to WWE yet. Maybe NXT, but not main roster. I don't think he's also dating Paige, I think. Or is it Dana? I don't know. I'm not up with all my who's dating who stuff. And, well, that's another show. But again, it was a really fun show. Um, so I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Again, with next week, um, a little scheduling notes is that probably on Saturday at night, I will put up my NXT show. What happens here in Daytona Beach? So a little bit of the schedule. On Saturday, 7 o'clock at the Multicultural Center here in Daytona Beach, you will get to see this guy, Bobo Tom. And more importantly, you will get to see NXT. So again, if you want to say hi, Hobo Tom, here's, here's, here's a little piece of aluminum for you. I drank my Coke can. I don't want to throw it out. You're a hobo. You take aluminum. Thank you for your shows. You say that, I'll say, hey, you want to give your shout out to everyone? You can if you want. If not, I'll, I'll say, I'd like to thank that person that gave me a Coke can. It goes in my aluminum pile. Helps increase my what, what little money I make. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. And enjoy your Saturday night if you do choose to drink, such as I do. Saturday night. And one, be of legal age over 21. I'm well over 21 now. And of course, I'm doing this at home and I am not going out. If you are out drinking, please get a ride. That is the public service summons from Hobo Tom. That way you're less likely to hit a hobo in the road while he's collecting aluminum. Probably the beer can you throw out of your car. And everyone have a good night. Bye.